My name is Raim Simpson and I'm the Executive Vice President of Dominion Diamonds Corporation. Oh yes, very much. Um, partly because the, the jewellery trade in India is very strong, particularly in the process of polishing diamonds. So that's taking the raw, rough diamonds that come from all over the world, Russia, Canada um, and South Africa, uh, although Canada and Russia are the biggest producers these days. Um, and they all get sold through various channels, but they, they come here to India to get manufactured. So 95% of the stones, raw diamonds, get polished here in India before they're then sold on to the jewelry stores around the world, including the big brand names, you know, the, the Harry Winstons, the Cartiers, the Tiffany's, uh, all, all sourced diamonds from India. Is, uh, and does the world know this? I don't think so. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an opportunity missed, I think, for India to be able to, to celebrate this craftsmanship, which clearly was uh, inherent in its history. Uh, diamonds were first found in India. There was no other place in the world up until uh, Brazil. Uh, diamonds were found in Brazil. And uh, they inherently had this culture of diamonds and fasting diamonds. And although through the ages that may have been drifted over to the European countries with uh, the trading routes and the wealth, um, in this century it's come back to India. And it's been a pleasure to see uh, that, that business grow from its inherent roots, but grow in this century and introduce new technology and new vibrancy into how to polish these goods to, to the extent that they, yes, they do dominate the industry in terms of polishing. Well, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult in a way because the consumers buy jewelry. They don't buy individual diamonds. So the, trying to link the two things does become quite difficult. Although there are a number of uh, local jewelry brands that are doing very successfully and beginning to be known internationally. And I think maybe that's the right way to do it. But, but we're, here we're talking about a craftsmanship of a component of the final piece. But I think there's opportunity to rectify that to some degree through the branding of Indian jewelry into the rest of the world. I think there's always a, a, a difference between the inherent knowledge of how a product's produced and the end product. And some people want to just experience the end product and therefore it becomes difficult to, to bring that craftsmanship aspect in. But actually my experience, uh, what, I, what I was at Harry Winston, was that any time we had a customer that we could bring to our jewelry workshop, we weren't polishing diamonds there, we were making the jewelry, and they saw the thousands of hours that we went into the craftsmanship to, to develop that, I think that inherently just, just made people appreciate the craftsmanship, the quality, the effort that had gone into that piece, and they, they, were, they were hooked, and they were customers for life because of that inherent understanding. So I think uh, whatever the craft is, uh, the more that we can show people and explain the effort and the, 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 uh, the knowledge that has gone into producing these products, the more that consumers will appreciate that. Uh, well, it's very difficult. I mean, it's all about communication. And I think uh, there's probably two obvious ways. You know, the, the, the purveyors of, of, uh, of craftsmanship and luxury, if we can call it that, tend to be the brands around the world, the famous brands. And uh, as they're, they're growing to, to the uh, developing societies, I think that, that will continue. So, so one obvious way is to introduce the quality Indian product through those brands and to celebrate that. And uh, we, we had a mention earlier today of uh, Prada doing exactly that. It's a wonderful thing and more brands need to do that and celebrate the craftsmanship. And the other obvious way is to develop new brands, Indian brands, and bring them to the rest of the world. And therefore that also celebrates that craftsmanship. And I think that's a very important thing to do, although a very difficult thing to do. I know some companies who've been discussing taking Indian design and, and selling it. Uh, partly because they, they've struggled, quite rightly, they've struggled in India to, to break ground. So jewelry companies, a good example would be Tiffany. Tiffany, iconic American jewel, jeweler. And it has lots of stores in uh, most of the world, including China. India, it's a difficult place because their desi design aesthetic is very different from the traditional ones here. So one way would be to take those Indian designs and, and pervade through. And I know some, some people have, have toyed with that idea. And uh, I, I think that would be a good thing. But better, I think, will be to, to meld those, those aspects of a culture. Tiffany shouldn't give up its identity over to an Indian style. They should try and meld and, and merge those, those cultural styles. And uh, some, some of the uh, fashion brands have been looking to achieve that. Well, it was wonderful. I have to say, I, was, um, I think it's the first time in all my times coming to India where I've seen a coll collection of different products of that high quality all in the same area. Normally, you have to go and seek out that fabric manufacturer or that uh, silverware maker. But here we, we had it uh, displayed in, in uh, what is a wonderful environment. And 
having worked on uh, various retail store developments, just just to appreciate the the, the, the uh, excellent space that's been put together to to develop and to show off that product without detracting from it, so not overpowering it. Uh, it was wonderful. So it was a great showcase to see that product, and it was also good to see that the that the designers were trying different things, and I think there had been an active um, approach to try and cross fertilize a little bit. So get the textile designer to look at some furniture, get those things. And I think you know that collaboration. I hope will between the designers will lead to great things as well in the future. Well, that'll be a difficult one, and that'll be a little unfair of me if I started picking those things out. I would like to have spent more time before I, I would say anything there. So I, I'll. I, I, I won't choose one. It's always bad choosing a winner. I, I particularly like some of the furniture. I, 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 um, uh, there was there was a, a wooden leather piece that I thought was particularly uh, impressive. It, to me, it sort of captured a little bit of the old of India and some of some of those those wonderful solid pieces of furniture, and yet had modern design elements. And I think that showed off a lot of craftsmanship with an inherent understanding of Indian culture. There.